Our next speaker is Dr. Ron Toomey. Dr. Ron Toomey is an Emeritus Professor from the College of Arts and Education at Victoria University, Australia. In a career spanning over 40 years, Dr. Ron has held numerous positions within education, from a secondary school teacher to the foundation head of the College of Education at Victoria University. When Dr. Toomey retired, he was appointed to adjunct professor positions at La Trobe University, the Australian Catholic University, and the University of Newcastle. He worked on several national projects in the areas of values education, lifelong learning, and the improvement of teacher education. More recently, he worked with colleagues on a five-year-long project titled Creating the Globally Sustainable Self. Currently, he's working with the Western Washington University on a study examining the capacity of value-based education to contribute to the well-being of youth at risk. Dr. Tumi will be presenting on the topic, Value-Based Education and Student Well-Being. May I invite Dr. Tumi to address us, please? Green forward. Oh, not the man I used to be. Good morning, or good afternoon, colleagues. Thank you so much for taking the time to come. I'll see if I can make it worth your while. I wanted to talk to you about. Well, now, firstly, I want to say that what I'm about to say, um, I've, there's lots of echoes here for you in the previous five speakers about, uh, well, the, the first part of what I heard this morning was these are the sorts of things that young kids today and adolescents especially are confronting. And there were huge echoes there for me. Uh, we've got 14 grandkids. The adolescents of them, especially the girls, are going through seriously tough times right now. So this stuff really strikes a chord with me. Uh, I, 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 I recognised in those early bits this morning about these are the things that kids are confronting. Uh, apart from that, I want, to, I want to talk to you about something like uh, Dr Levy just was speaking about that. Yeah, what what can we do about this stuff? How can we make life? How can we make life better? Not just for those kids, but for ourselves and the world, for that matter. Now that question, who am I? Uh, it's a good question, but it's a pretty facile question when you think about it. A much better question is, who are we? Who are we as everyone in the world, as one together, all working to pull in the one direction, helping each other? That's a much better question. And I think education can play a, a bit of a role in that. And that's why I wanted to talk to you. And it will have to be briefly because we're running out of time and I'm getting between you and the crayfish sandwiches and I don't want to do that. I wanted to talk to you about values-based education and student well-being. I want to do it for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because Bhavana, Bhuvana asked me would I do that, meaning I don't think many of you will know a lot about values-based education, and I'm going to sing its praises because I think it's the bee's knees. And one of the reasons I think it's the bee's knees is because it's just unequivocal. We've done so much work on this now over the last 20 odd years, if people approach schooling from a values-based education perspective, it is unequivocal. It has a massive benefit on young people's cognitive, social, emotional, and dare I say it, spiritual well-being. That is, they become better people. They become happier people. They, be, they get their kefi back, is the way the Greeks talk about it. They don't wallow in misery.
But the other reason I thought we could talk about it was, and this is, you know, this is the boy from down under, you know, the bloke from, from Melbourne who, you know, he's different to everyone else in the room. I can't see anyone else in the room who looks like me. Um, so I had to read stuff before I came here. And one of the things I read was the, um, the government documents about the aspirations the Ministry of Education has for education in Singapore. And I, I understand differences between aspirations and what happens in a day-to-day -day basis in classrooms. I, you know, I know what happens when you pull the door across. On the other hand, the Ministry is now saying that there are core values, five core values that they want to see in every young person in Singapore. They want those developed in every young person in Singapore so that they're better for the future. So that's the reason, they're the two reasons I wanted to talk to you about values-based education, to let you into the picture, if you're not already in the picture, about what it is. And secondly, to bring some food from thought from down under, just food for thought, to get you to think about, well, I wonder whether I could do some of that stuff. So what is values-based education? Well, it's a symbiotic thing. I assume you know what symbiosis is. When two things come together so that they mutually support each other. This is what quality teaching is. It's been referred to, it's been referred to a couple of times this morning. Quality teaching isn't a technical skill. It's not something that you can drill into kids. Uh, a colleague of mine says something like this. They don't know what, th they don't care what you know until they know that you care. Got it? Quality teaching is about relationships. It's about how you attach to them and how they attach to you. Mutual concern, mutual, dare I say it, mutual love. Love of them, love of yourself, and love of what you're doing with them. And it's not technical in the sense of you, 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 you tell them how to do sums or you tell them what the capital of um, Malaysia is. It's about some deep learning, about enabling them to really have a go at finding out what really interests them, finding out as best they can, with your help, to take that deeply. This is what, this is what um, quality teaching is. It's connected to the real world. I mean, by and large, kids couldn't care less about stuff that's not connected to the real world. I suppose this last one relates to other things we've heard this morning too. It's about being able to make those young people in the room feel like we're all in this together. No one's left out. No one's made to feel bullied or ashamed that they're not able to make a contribution. The gift of the quality teacher is to make that child who might have been bullied that child that we've heard described this morning made that child feel, wow, I'm cared for in this room and make that child, as a consequence of that, have a go, make an attempt and as a consequence again, feel better about themselves. Now, how do you, how do you set up that sort of situation? You know, what, what's the magic wand you wave? so that you don't see yourself as a technician, so that you suddenly develop those skills of empathy with young people, care, 
feeling strongly about them and what you're doing with them? Well, the research that we've done, my colleagues and I, comes out of, well, nearly 20 years now, the Australian Values Education Research Project. Uh, 400 odd schools, thousands of kids, thousands of teachers who were, with a $23 million Australian government grant, were asked to show ivory tower people like myself, how do we, how do we have a successful, well-implemented values education program? Now that's the symbiosis. When you have a successful values education program, meaning, meaning, when you spend some time every day explicitly teaching your, your, your children in care the deep meaning of those five core values espoused by the Ministry of Education or the school community's values, when you spend time explicitly teaching them, the kids change. If they really learn what caring is, if they really learn what responsibil responsibility is, they change. All the evidence is that when you explicitly teach values, the school calms down. People behave differently towards each other. Not in a flash. It doesn't happen between period one and period two. This stuff takes time, like anything in life. Relationships develop. And, as I'll show you later on, cognitive, social, emotional, and again, dare I say it, spiritual development in those kids occurs, and in you as a teacher. So they're the five, they're the five if you didn't already know, and I'd expect everyone in the room would know. I mean, I only know because I looked it up on the internet. But they're the five, or um, six, sorry, the six core values that the ministry wants to see um, inculcated, developed, nurtured in the young uh, people of Singapore. And that, that, there'd be striking chords here with you, given what's already been said this morning. Respect, resilience, integrity, care, harmony. These are all pro-social things. These are all things that make you feel good about yourself, about the person next to you, about the state, about the world. A key part of a values education program is to make sure that you just unequivocally, this is what we're on about. And you put these values up in plain sight so that nobody can run, nobody can hide from them. This is from a school in South Australia in the program I mentioned before. As you walk in the front door, this is what you greet. This, they're saying, this is what we're all about. And that's the first part of a explicit values education program. Those, those signs in the front room, well, I'll say it another way. I used to feel, as a young school teacher, you could feel the walls of the school speaking to you. You could feel whether the school was fair dinkum, whether it was really, whether it had what it said, whether it really had that in its heart. Well, this you know, makes it unes unescapable. You are putting it up and showing it to everyone. And you have to find techniques, if you're going to do this explicitly, you have to find ways of actually getting this message across to youngsters. So this is just one quick, simple idea, using a Y-chart graphic organiser, so that when you're talking to kids about, let's say, care, what's it look like? What's it feel like? Put it in the, in the, organ, in the graphic organiser. Talk to each other about it. Not you saying, this is what care, it's from them, from them. You can build it into 
That is, you can build the, the values into the stuff you do every day of the week. This is Francis Burnett's uh, book, The Secret Garden. Probably there wouldn't be a person in the room that doesn't know this book, I suspect. Well, this is... Oh, sorry. Um, you can use a book like this to reinforce with the students. I mean, you would use this, of course, as part of your literacy program. But the questions that you raise with the kids about it would be beyond literacy. They would be about, I wonder why Mary's such a little... You know, she's so disagreeable. What's going on there? And you could tease out that whole business about values, responsibility, harmony. You could use that book to do that. And again, in the, in the spirit of um, suggesting that a very important thing for the young people to do is to develop, get their, their, develop their own knowledge, get their own handle on it, talk about it amongst each other under your guidance so that, so that they, they have deep knowledge about something. This is called a Socratic circle where the kids sit in a circle, the teacher prepares them for this exercise by giving them a whole lot of written material, visual material. This one was about what does it mean to be an Australian today? Now, Australia is the most multicultural society in the world. And you can see here the, the range of, of eth ethnicities that, that are in this group. So they get a whole lot of material about what it means to be Australian today and sit in the circle and the idea is not that you run the show but that they have to keep talking about this one after the other, no interruption. They've got to actually abide by the values of being respectful, being responsible, taking a turn, all that stuff. And then at the end... No sound? How do we turn that up? No, doesn't matter. It's all right. It's all right. No, doesn't matter. That's a little video where the kids at the end of that Socratic circle said, well, look, this is what happened to me. So that Muslim girl there was talking about how she'd changed her attitudes to the girls in the Catholic school that she'd had some, uh, some dealings with over the Socratic circle. That is, that sort of teaching, that Socratic circle idea, produces a, you know, a value disposition that otherwise wouldn't be there if you were telling them what to do. Here's another example. Um, do you know the book Dust? It's, um, it, it was produced under the, uh, Save the Save the Children's Fund. It, sorry. It talks about the effect of famine in Niger and opens up a whole lot of possibilities, apart from literature, about how to discuss the haves with the have-nots in that sort of context. Now, this is just to quickly report to return to the idea about values-based education produces improved cognitive, social, emotional and spiritual well-being. There was a huge amount of research done during this project where things like this were un uncovered. That the values journey has provided many benefits to the students in as far as a coordinated curriculum and learning experiences have afforded a, a sense of belonging, connectedness, resilience and a sense of self. The values dispositions developed as a result of these, these programs 
include a stronger sense of self, connectedness, resilience, and a heightened sense of possibility, hope for the future. Creating a sense of belonging through a network of positive relationships with caring adults. This is, the, this is what people in the schools were saying about the effect of values education, values-based education on the youngsters that were experiencing the program. That, it was done, that work was done as, as part of a, a big study for the Australian government. I won't bore you with that in the interest of time. Um, other stuff here about the impact of values education on greater self-awareness, greater capacity for self-appraisal, self-regulation, enhanced self-esteem. Now, I don't know whether you're still wondering why is he telling us all this stuff? Well, I reckon those sorts of findings, what they suggest to me is that values education values-based education has the potential to be a massive antidote to the sort of things we heard about earlier this morning, about student anxiety, about the clinical bits. This is not clinical stuff, this is educational stuff. But it's, there's no silver bullet for what we're talking about today. It's going to require a collective effort. And part of the collective effort might be this sort of stuff. Now, I'll just finish on this note. Sorry for rushing, it's not in my nature to rush, but I, I, I really do feel like I'm getting between you and the crayfish sandwiches. <laughs> I've had the very good fortune for all of 2021, the you know, huge privilege to work at a little school on the outskirts of Brisbane in Queensland in Australia called the Tagulawa School. To get into Tagulua, these are the sorts of things that will get you into Tagulua. First, you've got to be male. You can't be a girl, you can't get in. I'll explain to you in, in due course. The second thing you've got to do is make sure that no other school anywhere in Australia will touch you. You've got to be that bad. I'm, not, this, I'm serious. Here's a little... The first day I went to Tagulua, the principal said to me, park your car there, Ron. I did. About 20 minutes later, the principal comes and gets me and says, can you come back and lock your car? Three kids have broken into it. In the car park. Now, we're talking about, um, as we've heard before, we're talking about seriously damaged kids. Um, so, as I say, I've had the enormous privilege of working for a year with... with those kids, those teachers at that school. And this is what, and I'm choosing words carefully now, this is what a stepmother of one of those boys said very early on in 2021 when I was working with them. This is what she said about her son. I hope we've got sound for this. Uh, can you play that for me, anyone? I don't think I've got... Here, I'll tell you. I'll paraphrase. She says about her son... He was really, really, really naughty. When it was time to go to school, he would throw huge tantrums. On the way to school, he'd grab the wheel and try and pull me off the road. So, no one at any other school would have anything to do with him. Very, very, very vicious and violent. They say something to him, he'd say, P off or F off. Disrespectful. Um, if he was asked to do something, he'd tell them to go away or to P off or F off or whatever it could be that, it, that came out of his mouth. Um, if a child looked at him sideways, he bashed the child. 
Um, if he didn't like the work, he'd rip it up and walk out of his classroom. Um, he threw scissors at teachers. He smashed the smart boards in the classroom. Mm. Um, he was in year five reading at a year two level. Um, his mathematics was in a year one level. He was, sorry, he was really, really, really um, naughty, <laughs> very naughty. And there was nothing that the school or us as parents could do mm. to help it. Mm. Um, and that's when we were just, the school kicked him out. No other school in the area wanted him because he'd already been to two other schools and we were stuck. We thought our boy was never going to get better. We thought he was never going to get the help that he needed. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. So the boy and his, his mum, his stepmum and he are quite happy for me to talk about this publicly. They've signed off on it. A 14 year old still massively grieving his mother leaving the family home before he was two, ADHD, depressed, you know, badly depressed kid. And after a year at Tagulua, do you think he's any different? Well, this is what, this is what his mum, his stepmum says. Oh, absolutely, 110%. He has done the biggest 360 degree turnaround. We now have full adult conversations with him. He tells us what he's learned at school and he wants to do his projects. And it's just, he's a completely different person. Now look, I might look a bit naive, but I, I know that that's a big say. Even if only half that's true, even if just 10% of it's true, that's got to tell you something about the power of VBE. And his teachers say uh, he, he's 80% on a 10 point scale for, for good esteem. Now, people with good esteem don't throw the scissors at the whiteboards, which is what his mum said he was doing previously. He's well connected with his friends. He's liking school. And his results are getting better. Um, I don't want to leave you with, I feel like I'm giving you sort of a three quarter time speech here because I get worked up about this stuff. But there is just no question, this values based education stuff in good hands has the capacity to turn things around. Um, and so as I said, here's some food for thought from the bloke down under. Thank you, Dr. Timmy, for that uplifting sharing on your experiences working with students at risk and the Tagulawa School, and how value-based education can give students greater self-awareness, self-regulation, and heighten their self-esteem.